Hey guys, and welcome to part 3 of Create Your Own Webshop with ESP.NET. In today's lesson, I will show you how you can link the database which we've created in our last lesson to the website that we created in the first one. To accomplish this, we will be using Entity Framework. So let's dive right in. Open up the website which you've created in lesson 1. If you haven't got the source code yet, you can download it from the starter pack from the description below this video. It contains the source code as seen at the end of lesson 1. First a quick word about Entity Framework itself. Entity Framework is a very powerful tool developed by Microsoft that eliminates the need to write most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. Entity Framework is able to generate entity classes, which are um, basically code depictions of database tables and or objects by using an existing database. Uh, it also contains most of the logic required to fetch and manipulate database objects. This will become clearer as we progress through the lesson. There are two ways of working with EF. The first one being database first, and the second one being code first. Database first expects you to first create a fully working relational database. Using that, you can let Entity Framework automatically generate the entity objects for you, as well as map the relations and uh, write, set up the diagrams and models. When using code first, you will need to write the entity objects by yourself and map the relations in code. You can then let Entity Framework generate the database for you. In this lesson, we will be using the database first method. We will be using the latest version of Entity Framework, which at the time of recording this video is version 6.0. Visual Studio usually does not come pre-installed with 6.0, so we will need to install it by hand. To do this, right click your project and look for the manage new get packages open up the online tab and make sure that the entity framework is installed Also make sure that you're using at least um, .NET Framework 4.5 to see what version you're running. Once again, click the Garage app and look for the Properties button. It can also be opened by pushing Alt and Enter at the same time. And make sure that your target framework is set to at least 4.5. Now we're going to add the Entity Framework object itself. Right click your project and select add, add new item. Then look for the edo.net entity data model and add it. It will ask you if it can be placed in the app code folder. Hit yes, this is a best practice. And then we will need to select a model content. Since we're working database first, select the generate from database option and hit next. Uh, we'll need a connection between the database and your um, website, so hit the new connection button and in server name type in localhost backslash SQL express or the URL of your online database should you be using one. If you typed everything in correctly, your garage database should show up in the drop down list at the bottom. Notice how this automatically generates a connection string for us. Hit the next button. And now we'll need to select which objects we want to add to our model. Open up the tables checkbox and make sure to add the cart, product and product types objects to your model. Notice how the model will be called garage model. All um, default settings are in order, so hit the finish button. Once all files have been generated, you will be taken to the model overview. Notice how it is a exact replication of the um, database overview that we created in our previous lesson. 
In fact, if you open up the model.cs file, you'll notice that Entity Framework has generated entity classes for us based on the SQL tables that we have created in our last lesson. If you watched my previous series, Create a Website with ESP.NET, you'll likely remember that we used to create these um, classes by hand. Now, thanks to Entity Framework, we no longer need to waste time doing that. Alright, that's it for the entity objects. Now let's write the models, which will allow us to manipulate and fetch data using these entity objects. Within the app code folder, add another folder and call it models. We will create a model for each entity object, namely product, product types and cart. Um, let's start by creating a model for table product. So select add class and call it product model. Let's start by writing the code to manipulate data, uh, such as inserting, updating and deleting data. Remove the constructor and type in three empty methods that each return a string and call them insert products. update product and delete product it's very easy to manipulate data using entity framework let's start by writing down the code to insert a product when working with database data it's usually a good idea to use try catch statements so that our application does not crash whenever something goes wrong with the communication to the database. So um, add a try catch statement and within the catch add return error plus e. This will uh, return the error message whenever something goes wrong. Copy and paste these between all three methods. Now let's start by working on the insert product method. First, call a product object as an input parameter and call it product. Next, we will need to call the um, entity framework object which we created. So that is um, garage entities. Call it db equals new garage entities. Now we can use this db object to manipulate the database. We will need an entity object each time when you want to communicate with the database. So copy and paste that line of code to all three methods. Now we will need to tell the entity object to store this product object in table products. To do this, type down db.products.add and product within parentheses. This will add the product object to the table in memory. To actually store it in the SQL database, type down db.savechanges. And there we go. These three line of codes is all that is required to add a new object to the database. Last but not least, let's return a confirmation message. So type down return products. Notice how all um, Table fields are available as parameters thanks to the entity object. So that is return product.name plus was successfully inserted. There we go. Now let's get working on the update product method. Updating data works a little different. First we will need to fetch the object that needs to be updated and replace that by a new object. So for this one, we will need two input parameters. The first one being an int id, which is going to be the unique identifier of the object that needs to be updated, as well as a product ob object that will contain the new updated data. To get an object from a database, use the following syntax. First create a new product object, call it b. 
then call your db object, table products, and select the find method. The find method returns an object using the primary key of a row. So as input, type in id. Now we will need to replace the data stored in p by the data stored in products. So type down p name equals products.name and do that for all parameters. Like this. So make sure to get all parameters. Do note not to add the parameters cards and product type. These are uh, linked values which we cannot update from here. So only include the parameters that are actually within the table. Don't forget to call the db.savechanges method again. So everything gets stored. And to return a confirmation message. So that's return product.name was successfully updated. Moving right on to deleting objects. To delete an object, we're going to use the primary key value. So type in int id as an input parameter. And first, we will need to find the object that needs to be deleted. So create a new product object, call it product, equals db.products.find is id. Then type in db dot products dot attach type in a product object then type in db dot products dot remove and call the products object again and just the same do not forget to call the save changes method and to return a confirmation object confirmation message excuse me product dot name was successfully deleted Now let's do the same for the product type model. So add another uh, class, call it product type model and hit OK. We can recycle a lot of code from the previous model. Just copy and paste all the codes which you have just written down and paste it in your new model and hit save. Now let's do this quick and dirty. Hit Ctrl and H at the same time. And type in product, capital letter, replaced by product type. Make sure the um, match case select option is, is selected. And select replace all. Do the same for product with a small first letter. And that takes care of the majority of our work. There will of course be some items that need to be updated by hand. So let's, let's look for errors. And these parameters are no longer relevant, so delete them. I think that um, product type only has column name. Yep, so we do not need to add anything. Just remove the parameters that are no longer required. And there we go. That's how fast you can create a model using Entity Framework. Do the same for cart. So add another model. Cart model. Copy all the methods. And paste them over here. Next. Ctrl H. Replace products by cart. Match case, replace all. And fix the errors where necessary. Let's see. An order in a card does not have a name. So uh, let's replace it by the date on which it was purchased. Um, Replace all parameters here by their correct ones. So like this.
and make sure to only include the um, fields that are actually in the table and are not uh, linked values like this so only these five parameters and nothing else let's replace it by the dates on which it was purchased here as well and in the delete method as well there we go we now have three models that are each perfectly capable of inserting updating and deleting data now let's create a page in which we can use the methods which we have just created inside folder pages add another folder and call it management this will contain all pages that uh, communicate to the database we will uh, secure it in a later lesson so uh, let's start off easy by creating a page that allows us to add new product type objects so add a new item webform make sure select master page is checked and call it manage product types since a product type only has a name and an id parameter this can be done quickly type in name equals add a text box call it txt name and add a submit button and add a label there as well where is a label ah here call it label results and set it text to null this will this will cause it to appear invisible by default now double click the submit button so we can write down some code to store objects in code behind I prefer to keep my code that creates entity objects separate even if the entity in question has only one field so create a new private method and have it return a product type and call it create product type no input parameters within that method create a product type call it p and set its name parameter to txt name.text last but not least return object p so that we can use it inside button submit first create a new product type model and call it model then create a new product type object called pt by calling the create product type method then set um, label results text property to the output of method insert product type of object model with pt as an input parameter there we go that should be all that is required to insert a new product type into the database so let's try it out right click your page and select set a start page and run your project and let's try adding a few product types let's see let's type in breaks notice how we get an, um, a confirmation message let's add another one um, engines there we go these objects are now added to the database let's double check the database to be certain and as you can see these objects have been added now let's add a page to add new products so go back to visual studio and add a new page to folder management and call it manage products 
our product has a few more parameters, so we're going to go through this quickly. So just um, copy the design that I'm going to create here. There we go, that's all fields that we need. Now let's fill the drop-down list, starting with the type drop-down list. In this list we're going to display all product types in table product types. So I expand the little arrow and select choose data source. Add a new data source and select SQL database. Um, Entity Framework has already generated a connection string for us, so select that one. And look for the product types table. Select everything, order by name. And hit OK. Make sure that in the data field to display, you select the name. And in the data field for the value, you select the ID. And hit the OK button. We're also going to fill the drop-down list for images. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new image folder. We're going to store some uh, images in it. And then we're going to pass a list of all files in that folder to this drop-down list over here. So inside folder images, create a new folder, call it products. I already have the folder. And store some images in it. If you want to use the same images as I do, Look for the um, download folder in the description below the video. The starter pack also has these uh, images already present. Go to your code behind screen and create a new method get images. No input. Then write down the code that I write here. There we go. Now we just need to call this method when the page is loaded. To avoid that the data gets added each time when the page is refreshed, we can call a if not is postback. So a postback is a refresh of a page. So by calling not postback, we make sure that this method gets called only when the page is opened for the first time. So if not pageback, get images. So let's try that out. Set your um, manage products as your um, start page and run your project. And as you can see, both the drop-down list for type and images have been filled. 
Now let's get working on inserting product data. So go back to your code behind and just the same as for um, product types, create a method that returns a product object, call it create product and type in following code. There we go. Now in your design view, double click the submit button. So a submit event is generated. And just as in product types, first call a product model. Then create a product object using the create product method. And set label result text value to product model that dot insert product and product as input. That's it. So once again, let's try that out. So let's try adding some breaks. Type breaks price. I have no idea how much breaks cost. Let's put them at 74.99. Image break disks description. These are for breaking and hit the submit button so far so good let's try another um, engine oil I do not have a oil type yet, yet yet so let's call it an engine type price let's say it's 25 pounds I have no idea if that's expensive or cheap um, engine oil the JPEG Description, vroom vroom, and hit submit again. So now let's take a look at the database, see if they are actually inserted. And as you can see, all data has been correctly added to the database. So that's it for today. You now know how you can connect and insert data into a database using Entity Framework 6.0. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask me them in the comment section below or discuss them on the forums. There is a link in the description as well. And be sure to check in for our next lesson in which I will show you how we can fetch data from a database as well as update or delete existing objects.